Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about some learnings that I've had. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you, now that you've worked for a while, tell, uh, tell me, or the specific person, some, some things that you've taken away from working as a software developer, something that you've learned in your time working? And I think this is a nice question because it's a very nice and open question where I can make a hundred videos and probably teach you or at least tell you about something each time. So the short answer is that software, one of the learnings at least for me is that software is always expected to work. Now what do I mean by that? Well I mean that you will never be fast enough if that makes sense. You will never ever be fast enough. And I know this may feel weird and to some juniors it might sound like the most horrible things and horrible thing to say in the world because you probably already feel like you're the slowest motherfucker who ever lived and you're dumb as shit and like all of this good stuff that quite a lot of people feel when they start out in this industry and they learn the ropes. But what I'm telling you is that this doesn't this doesn't go away. The sensation that you are responsible or that the, this bad gut feeling you have that you feel sort of guilty that you're not fast enough, that may go away, definitely. But the perception is always going to be that things are taking too, uh, too long. Now, what the, the, does that have to do with my this thing I was saying? that software is, is always expected to work. Well, you see, the thing is that when you are developing something, whenever you are working, you will have an enormous amount of pressure on you to deliver as fast as possible. Because in that moment, of t moment in time, your stakeholders, your product managers, and so forth and so forth, their focus is not going usually they usually like this and this is it is the weirdest phenomenon i have ever seen so usually you have a long-term perspective and a short-term perspective and pretty much anybody who doesn't have a fairly high level of personal maturity and wisdom within this industry they will focus on the short term always they will set some vague long-term goal but they will always focus on the short term the only thing that they care about when it comes to the long term is the deadline in general. Usually, usually when you work with stakeholders, the main thing for them is that the deadline is met at the end of it. Because when you start out a project, everybody's very excited. They're very, you know, we're going to make something awesome, something perfect. But the problem with awesome and perfect is that that takes a fucking long time. Usually at least 50% as much time as what they have accounted for. And that is the... That's the problem of economics. You making something perfect is not economically sustainable <clears throat> for quite a lot of companies and people. So you, when you plan as if you are, you, as if you're going to build something perfectly, which is for quite a lot of companies the case that they're innovative and like they're building something amazing, they are going to underestimate how much time they actually need to do something that is really really well made and the learning processes and the errors and like you know redoing things just because you did it wrong at one point because you didn't have enough information stuff like this and what this leads to is that the short term for your stakeholders is going to be the highest priority at all times pretty much so whenever they feel like oh shit we're a little bit slow or the you you will hear this que this question so 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 many times Hmm, uh, is there any way we can speed this up? Is there any way we can cut a corner? Um, okay, do we really have to do that? Can't we do this instead? Because that's gonna save on time. That's the thing that they're gonna do. It is, it's very similar to wanting to build a bridge from one side to, to, the, uh, to, an, uh, to the other side. And then as you start building the bridge, in the beginning you do, you set every stone just so and you make sure that everything is very, very stable and then by like a third of, way, a third of the way, you have a bunch of project managers and engineering representatives that go, oh shit, 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 we need to speed this up. So we need to go shaper on material and we need to like try to cut corners and labor costs and stuff like that. And then the bridge actually becomes more and more unstable until you 
maybe even slow, start causing problems that slow down the actual process of getting to the other side of this river. And by the time you get there, you're left with something that is hopefully what you wanted. But most of the time, if we look at how the industry and how software development actually works these days, you're going to end up with something that is subpar to the vision that you had. Now, you can, of course, argue that you should really shoot for the stars and then you will land on the clouds. And in many ways, this is true. But I will argue that what usually happens uh, or what can happen, and it happens, I'm sorry to say quite often, is that you reach for the stars, but you pretty much land on the ground. You produce something where the system is perceived as being shit from someone's perspective. Usually, like it's very hard to produce any meaningful system without letting the developer or making the developers feel as if this is absolute shit. I don't think I've ever worked on a large scale project where there is not at least a few developers and usually it's more than a few who feel like their system is shit. I don't think anybody feels like, oh, this is a really beautiful project. I've never spoken to a developer who had just good things to say about their project because, you know, they're upfront and personal with all the code that is so messy and all the bugs that you have to know about, stuff like that. I had this comment with one of my sales. Uh, this we, this was in, a, it was a lighthearted, I swear, we were kind of joking here because we're friends, but he was saying that, oh, why is it that you programmers are always so bitter? And I said, well, it's very simple. My life or my day is filled with bugs and production outages and angry stakeholders that tell me that I'm slow. Your life is filled with business trips and PowerPoint presentations and GIFs. So that is that is the thing. The, the, this pressure that you will get, like as I said, like it, you will never be fast enough. Even if you produce that like a rate of 10 developers, they will always feel like they, you need to get there faster because unless you can meet that deadline or, I mean, even if you can meet that deadline, odds are that they want to make even more stuff and they want to get more advanced. Like it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's not like you're, it's, sometimes you get rewarded for being really, really fast, but most of the time you're just going to increase your own workload and you're going to, it's kind of like, earning money. People are not going to just get magically satisfied by getting enough money. They're just going to want more and more and more from, uh, from you, pretty much. And the horrible part about this is that if you run too fast, if you give in too much to this push that you get all the time, that you need to be faster, you need to move faster, 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 faster. If you start get letting that get to you too much and you stop making smart decisions on behalf of the project, that bridge that I was saying and talking about, that's when it actually really starts slowing down. And it might actually collapse at some point because you are not saying no. You are not focusing on the thing that matters the most. And that is that software is, the software is expected to work. It should work as cheaply as possible. Like you want to get there without any excess cost. But the thing is that you can only move as fast as your circumstances allow you to do without risk to the project. And that balancing act between how well, how much do I invest in my software development versus how many corners can I cut so that I actually get there at a more like a, at an earlier stage or like as quickly as possible and so forth and so forth. That balancing act, that is the true challenge of uh, sustaining a project over time. So uh, what I want you to take away from this is that for me one of the biggest learnings so far in my career is that software always needs to work but the industry and everybody around you will will push you in a fashion that is similar to that you're never fast enough and th that balancing act between having that pressure it's almost a little bit ungrateful because it really it it's very hard to make a name for yourself as the fast developer or something like that. You can absolutely do this, but you, you, you think that you're making people happy by cutting corners and being quick. And short term, you are making them happy, but they're not gonna be very happy when this system turns out to be absolute shit. But it's like there's this mental disconnection between two, be, for a lot of stakeholders that they don't understand that if they want a quality product at the end of this, they can't cut every corner along the way and cheapen the materials or the development process to the point where 
well, they did reach that mark, they did get there in time, but now the system is shit. That balancing, I, and I'm sorry to say, you as the developer, you have to bear the weight of quite a lot of, a lot of this pressure that you're not fast enough. And sometimes they might actually be so ungrateful that they fire you because you're not being fast enough or something like that. And that is, uh, it is one of the tough things about being a programmer to be fast enough to be satisfying to everybody who wants you to move fast, yet not cut corners to uh, give them every single thing that they want in terms of speed, because you need to do certain craftsman things as well. These things that you actually learned how to do with best practices and stuff, uh, you need to do these things because otherwise they, they're gonna get angry at you for the system being shit. So whatever, whatever you do, you might have someone who gets pissed off at you. Have a great day.